Hey, it's Kevin Lawn with the New Warehouse Podcast here at Modex 2022, and we are in the booth. I have two guests with me here. I have Mark Zabudil. There you go. I got it. And Matt Warner. So Mark is from MJ Holdings. He is the COO there, and we have Matt, who is from Manat uh, Global. He is also the COO there. So we got a couple of COOs in the booth here, um, and we're there customers actually so we're going to talk to customers um, from uh, Alpine Supply Chain Solutions um, and they're going to tell us a little bit about their experience they both recently went through major projects um, and they talked about it here at Modex actually earlier today in a, in a session with Alpine so so I guess uh, Mark why don't we start with you give us a little bit of background you know what's what's your company what is it you guys do and, um, and then we'll talk to Matt on his great Great. So, yeah, the background for our company at MJ Holding, we're a distributor that's been in business for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we distribute trading cards to the retail market. Okay. Uh, trading cards such as Pokemon, Magic Yu-Gi-Oh, and then, of course, all these oh, okay. sporting goods yes. cards. Yeah, MJ Holding. I get yeah. it now. Yeah, so, okay. all those, that, those, that's us. Uh, yeah. The name is not recognizable unless you're really you're in the industry, yeah. you're a trader, and yeah. you buy our cards and products. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But uh, our project, you know, is uh, one of... Uh, expanding and consolidating and really um, matching the growth in the business. And mm -hmm. we got in front of our project early on in 2020, okay. uh, before COVID hit, had the project in flight and then yeah. moving, and then we're able to implement during the COVID environment. So, mm -hmm. but uh, our primary, uh, you know, cust our customer is really the uh, the big retail chains, and yeah. uh, we turn our, our, our releases. 10, 15 releases a week, so it's a high volume, high change, right. mm -hmm. and there's a lot of uh, activity, so we manage the space for our retailers, mm -hmm. and they're gracious enough to give us uh, space in the store, and we curate the space, we manage it, we ship the product in, we stock the shelves, we mm -hmm. put the price tag labels on, and at the end of the day, we uh, you know bring the product back that doesn't sell and yeah. repurpose it through our operation. Oh, interesting, and, and you guys, I'm sure I've seen like kind of a, a surge lately, because there's been an increased popularity I've noticed in like especially Pokemon cards and stuff like that right yeah so there's two things that have happened right mm -hmm. obviously COVID had right. a lot of people staying at home mm -hmm. and reinventing uh, themselves finding right. things to do with the family so um, at the same time the collectability uh, kicked in started mm -hmm. you know taking off and then with COVID there was some you know challenges in the sporting goods world sports right. and yeah. restrictions so the cards that came out were of, of, of great interest mm -hmm. it just renewed a lot of interest on the sporting goods side yeah. and then obviously with Pokemon uh, a lot of folks uh, playing with their kids learning the game and, and yeah. enjoying it but the manufacturers also um, really looked at a different strategy in Pokemon mm -hmm. they viewed it as a game yeah. and they changed their strategy in late 18 and 19 and made it more about the collectability as well mm -hmm. so not only would you collect the cards to play the game but also yeah. collect the cards as you would that uh, you would like to have in your portfolio of cards from a mm -hmm. gaming perspective so with that chase element that's involved in the games yeah. uh, it really increased the popularity and the need and interest in the marketplace so mm -hmm. there's a couple dynamics happening at one time where um, it just those perfect storm of, of activities hit and yeah. you know fortunately we were in a good spot to be able to react to those market changes hmm. yeah very interesting and I, I've certainly seen the kind of the spike in popularity as well so it's interesting and, and we'll get into your project in a couple minutes here so let's let's hear from Matt so Matt tell us a little bit about your business and what it is that you guys do uh, so again Monique Global um, we operate today in eight international markets here okay. in the US as yeah. our corporate uh, mothership here mm -hmm. in uh, South Miami mm -hmm. um, we Predominantly, are in the beauty and wellness industry. Okay. Um, we got our start uh, just under eight years ago, so yeah. we're relatively young. Yeah, fresh. Yeah. Um, we sell premium hair care products, mm -hmm. uh, so shampoo, conditioner, and treatment products. We right. also recently got in, uh, involved in the skincare mm -hmm. uh, industry as well, mm -hmm. and recently wellness. Okay. We uh, distribute our products uh, through these eight uh, countries, mm -hmm. and we do it through a network marketing model or a direct sales model. Okay. Um, so we have literally hundreds of thousands of ambassadors, yeah. market partners we like to call them, mm -hmm. who uh, represent our products mm -hmm. to our customers or their customers and sell them directly to them person to person or through social media. Oh, okay, very interesting. And, and so, you know, obviously that's been a, a big thing too as well, especially from the social media influence aspect. Um, so I guess talk to us a little bit about your project. So, so we're here talking and kind of representing uh, Alpine, like as we mentioned, and obviously you guys are here because you've done projects with them, right? So, so I, Matt, tell, you, tell us a little bit about your project and kind of how Alpine helped you do that. Sure, thank you. 
it started for us uh, early 2020. Uh, okay. Similar, you know, COVID changed our world. Yeah, interesting time, um, right? <laughs> uh, Monate uh, had great momentum going uh, into 2020 mm -hmm. uh, from late 2019. Yeah. Uh, continually saw great growth, organic growth, but then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. We had such a great online presence yeah. in social media that when all of a sudden people started to shut down things in March mm -hmm. of 2020, we began to see our sales go off the charts yeah. because people now couldn't go to grocery stores or they didn't feel comfortable, right. but they we had a great uh, brand presence, so we started seeing our sales uh, take off mm. uh, through momentum of uh, online sales, right. basically uh, yeah. B2C, so we ship uh, our products directly to our consumers, right to their door. Mm -hmm. A typical order is three or four items. Right. And uh, we try to turn that around in 24 hours or less and get it out the door to our customers around the United States or in seven other markets outside the US. Okay, all right. And, and what about you, Mark? What, what was your kind of challenge when you head into this product or yeah. project? So I uh, joined MJ Holding about five years ago. Okay. And I come out of a high volume distribution business mm -hmm. in the food industry very consistent patterns, mm -hmm. that ups and flows. And when I transitioned over to MJ Holding, I realized that the service model and the activity levels for mm -hmm. our products and getting in the market was significantly different than a typical distributor would have. Right. All distributors have ups and flows and volumes and their, their business changes, right? Peaks and valleys, seasonal adjustments. Yeah. But ours is really driven on releases. So you get a, a block release for Pokemon, mm -hmm. a new uh, Panini release for its uh, Chrome basketball card. Yeah. And those releases are significant volumes and ups and downs through the business, right? So you mm -hmm. get this big release, you're shipping 15,000 stores to arrive on a Wednesday. So right. the volume that goes through the distribution center needs to be planned out, not only planning from an execution or shipment perspective, mm -hmm. but from a storage perspective. You'd bring in you know, several hundred pallets of a product. Yeah. How would you store that most optimally in the, in the building? And that's where my connection to Alpine came in, is yeah. they had the tools through their OmniSlot uh, capabilities and to really look at how should you profile the products that you're receiving mm -hmm. in the business. Because we have, obviously the trading card is one part, but we also have a toy business that's novelty impulse items. Okay. Very different, different product profiles. Mm -hmm and very different go-to-market strategies. So we had a design, a storage methodology that could accommodate the storing of those different types of products when you're playing containers of one type in right. or small release quantities of another type. What's that storage profile you need? So that's where Alpine came in with their technology mm -hmm. and really got in front of it from our perspective and helped us decide what the storage methodology should look like. Okay. How many six deep drive-ins should we have? How many three deep drive-ins? Yeah. Should we have any conventional record? How much high-dense storage should we have? Mm. They profiled all that for us from a storage methodology and it enabled us to order the product that we needed right. to slot the warehouse from a storage perspective. Mm. Very interesting. And, and now, so were you starting with a, an existing space or a brand new space? So we were, we were fortunate enough to be able to build a brand new building. Okay. So again, getting in front of that from a standpoint of laying the building out, optimize the space, 36 foot clear building, mm -hmm. uh, 360,000 square foot footprint. Right. And then we also decided we wanted to put a mezzanine in above the dock area to accommodate our reverse logistics program. Oh, okay. So the, the, the combination of those different elements of how we want to operate the business, Alpine was suited well to take our data. And it was, you know, every day we'd give them about seven terabytes of data on a daily oh, wow. basis okay. for them to analyze and run through their, their, their logic and their core system mm -hmm. to validate the recommendations and thoughts and the design that we had come together as a group with. Gotcha. Okay. And, and now your project is, is complete at this point? Or still so, yeah, here? we started our project. Our project went live in February of 2021. Okay. Uh, and again, we started earlier uh, on a receiving piece in our business, but mm -hmm. it started in 2020 going to bricks and mortar. Yeah. And then we've been operating the building since then and have had a lot of learnings. But from a storage perspective, spot on from a storage methodology. Mm -hmm. Everything that he suggested is worked out exactly the way we needed it to for the building and we haven't had any reason to change from a storage perspective and what right. the recommendations were. Hmm. That's very good to know. And so so talk to us a little bit about the I guess the compare and contrast kind of the the beforehand to now the current state. How what kind of improvements have you seen in efficiencies? Yeah, so again, we were operating out of four buildings, consolidated into one. Okay. Um, and, you know, again, you take advantage of the cube density, went with a yeah. three level pick module on the shipping side, but that gave us the floor space to increase the density in the building. Right. And when you go from uh, all conventional rack storage, mm -hmm. 
multiple handling of a pallet. You know, you'd have entire aisles of one type of product. It just wasn't efficient storage methodology. With a conventional rack, you're leaving more aisle space open in your warehouse, right? Oh, so okay. you don't you have more footprint of a space for travel path versus storage. So mm -hmm. by going with six deep uh, rack, and we would go with even six deep back to back. So you're yeah. having 12 pallet positions. In a typical warehouse, you may have four aisles mm. in that type of storage methodology. Yeah. In this one, we've got two. Okay. So you pick up that cube capacity and density. So the optimization of the storage allowed us to hold more pallets in our building, lessen the dependence on outside storage, mm. bring everything internal to the warehouse. And then from a handling perspective, reduced our cost of handling, yeah. uh, inventory accuracy, shrink, write off, all those types of inventory variances really went away because we are able to get you know, one item, one location, and therefore the integrity of our processes stood mm. up much better than they had yeah. when you're running a different type of storage methodology. Hmm. Very interesting, and it is, I always think it's very interesting to see, you know, what was the, the previous state to the current state. It sounds like you guys have really improved the efficiency with Alpine's help as well. Um, so, so, Matt, what about you? How, how did Alpine kind of help you guys to get to where you're at now? Great question. So uh, early on in uh, 2020, as we started to see the growth takeoff, we we involved them in, similar to what Mark said, really yeah. helping us understand our business through data. Okay. They're very good at doing uh, storage uh, capacity analysis, uh, mm -hmm. throughputs, and with all that data, they're able, able to help us see where we were and where we could be right. it would provide a lot more efficiency. So. At this time, we were fastly growing outside of our own warehouse. We knew we right. had to get more space, so we had to immediately go and find uh, some additional storage space. Mm -hmm. With their uh, analysis, they helped us see how much space we would need. Okay. We saw that in uh, a five-year time frame, we were currently sitting at about a 60,000 square foot active warehouse, mm -hmm. and within five years with our projected growth, we'd need about 300,000 square feet. Oh, wow. So in our model, we needed to uh, get more space immediately. Absolutely. Yeah. So we secured a new uh, headquarters in the Miami area, okay. and they immediately helped us understand with our data mm -hmm. what we could do in that 160,000 foot uh, square uh, warehouse. Mm -hmm. And we decided that we would do a primarily that would be our international focus. Okay. And phase two would be a new facility in Dallas. Oh, okay. Because most of our business is in the United States, 80% right. of our current revenue. Mm -hmm. So we would set up a Dallas hub for our U.S. operations. Mm -hmm. Miami, Florida, which is close to our manufacturing, yeah. would be ideal for our international B2B replenishment. Right. Okay. So we set up a killer high density uh, racking situation mm -hmm. in Doral in the Miami area. Right. And then uh, we also added a pick line there as well. Mm. A highly automated pick line that would serve the east coast of the United States mm. where Dallas would serve the Midwest and even the west coast if we needed to. Right. So from where we were to where we are today, night and day difference with the storage type analysis yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, Mark was referencing. Mm -hmm. um, the same footprint had we done it without uh, Alpine's help, yeah. we would have put in about 5,000 pallet positions in the same footprint, whereas yeah. today we're going to have 9,300, so 9,300. Wow, it's, it's almost, almost double, double. Yeah, yeah. with that's, the that's high capacity yeah. rack, and so we're super happy about that, mm -hmm. and we're uh, very excited to see phase two go live here in the summer mm -hmm. uh, when we go live with a, a pick to light system engineered and uh, helped through the Alpine Technology Group yeah. to help us implement that. We expect to see savings of 50% uh, improvement on our pick line technology. Wow. All right. Very interesting stuff, and it's great to hear the the stories from both sides, and, and hear how the kind of the, the contrast from the previous state to the current state, and how Alpine kind of helped you guys uh, get there and, and do that kind of thing. So, so I want to thank you guys both, uh, Mark and Matt, for stopping by the booth and talking to us, and we'll put more information about uh, Alpine on thenewwarehouse.com as well. Um, and it sounds like you guys would uh, give them your thumbs up, right? I would say absolutely yeah. two yeah. thumbs up. Okay. Great. All right. Thank great. You, so, Mark. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much for stopping by the booth, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your show. Great. Thank Thanks, you. Kevin. Have a good Appreciate day. It. Thank you.